My name is Malika, welcome to my channel. This channel is all about traveling more and expat life and I am the luckiest girl because I've actually been able to live in two different countries. I lived in Milan, Italy a few years ago and now I currently live with my husband in Beirut, Lebanon. If you wanna learn more about life in each city, I have a lot to say, so make sure you check out some of my other videos, let me know what you think and what questions you might have. I'm also someone who's been able to travel a ton, so I spend a lot of my time focusing on how to stay as safe as possible when traveling, especially when traveling as a woman by myself. I have taken plenty of trips with my friends, with my husband, but I've also taken a lot of solo trips domestically in the US and also all around the world, and I love traveling alone. So keep watching for some of my top safety tips for travelers. <laughs> Travel with a portable carbon monoxide detector. So carbon monoxide detectors are a home essential, but this year there have been several stories reported of people being found dead in their hotels or Airbnbs due to carbon monoxide poisoning. For a while, I just kind of assumed that including a carbon monoxide detector was a standard practice, but unfortunately it is not. So definitely get in the habit of double checking with your hotel or Airbnb host that there are functioning, functioning, carbon monoxide detectors before you finalize your booking and take extra precautions and pack your own portable carbon monoxide detector. I just picked up one of these on Amazon and I will also leave it linked in the description box, but there are dozens that you can choose from. I'm not endorsing a specific one, it really doesn't matter the brand, just look for something small and easy to pack and also check that it includes a backup battery in case where you're staying has a power outage. Don't forget a door jam or an additional lock. Okay, so story time. I was in New York for a family gathering um, a few months ago. We all booked the blocks of rooms at a chain hotel. It was like a Marriott or a Holiday Inn or something. And I was coming back to my room when I walked in, one of my cousins was just in the extra bed hanging out, chilling on her phone. And so I did expect her to be there so it wasn't a big deal, but I asked her how she got the key because her name was not on the reservation. And she said she just asked reception for the key to whatever room number it was and they just gave it to her. They didn't ask for ID. They didn't even verify that her name was on the booking. They just like literally handed her the key to my room. So naturally I went down there, screamed on the manager loud enough for several other guests in line to hear me and also freak out on him too. Unfortunately, this kind of stuff happens all too often and it can be absolutely deadly, especially for women. And now of course the door jam can protect you from someone coming in your room when you're not there. At least it can help keep you safe once you are inside. I use something like this which will basically block a door from opening and it also lets out an extremely loud alarm if the door is even cracked. You can get one for hotel rooms and then extras for when you stay in an Airbnb with multiple points of entry so every door is covered. Choose your travel partners carefully. So I could not make this video without discussing the absolutely tragic case of Shanquilla Robinson who was allegedly murdered on a group trip to Cabo at the hands of people she thought were her friends. I absolutely cannot imagine what her family is going through and how their hearts must be breaking. And unfortunately, her case is just not the only one of its kind. In the past year, there have been several stories of people allegedly being murdered by their travel partners, be it a spouse or a friend. And of course, there is no way to predict if someone you love will hurt you, and victims should never be blamed for the things that might happen to them. But all I can say is if you get invited on a trip with someone and you might have had a rocky relationship in the past or have some tensions, maybe just give it a second thought and trust your instinct and at least make sure people at home have some background on the situation just in case things go wrong. Prearrange airport transportation. So whenever I travel alone, I always book an airport transfer with a driver meet and greet. That means that the driver will be waiting for you inside the airport, usually holding a sign that has your name on it. As a female solo traveler, one of the times you are most vulnerable is when you land alone at the airport and you're trying to make it to your hotel. Having that driver meet and greet is an extra layer of security to make sure you aren't wandering around and potentially hopping in an unauthorized taxi with someone pretending to be a taxi driver. And a private driver may actually seem like a luxury, but it's actually not as expensive as it might seem. I usually look for these on Viator or Booking.com and when reserved in advance, they are around the same price a normal taxi would be sometimes with an added discount for your loyalty or booking with a particular vendor. There are also usually shared options for like a shuttle service that will pick up multiple travelers and then drop them at respective hotels. And that is a great way to get the secure and safe pickup, 
but also save money on the cost. And if you have extra time in the itinerary that you can spare, those are definitely a great option to save money, but just make sure you have time because those pickups do take longer. Since you're waiting for other passengers and then they make multiple stops in like an, a certain order and you don't know who's gonna get dropped off first. And if you're gonna try to save money by using public transportation, just be sure you know how to find it when you get to the airport and how to make your way to the hotel from wherever the bus or metro lets you off. Be sure to identify a cafe or a store in the area that would be a safe place to stop inside if you need a few minutes, like when you get out and need to check your phone for directions or pick up an Uber to your final destination. And preferably do not use this option at night, it's just too high risk. Share your itinerary with someone at home. Always make sure someone at home knows where you are and knows how to find you in case something happens. This means making sure they know where you're staying, how to contact your hotel or Airbnb host, what time you're supposed to be landing and departing, and any other important details about your itinerary. Unfortunately, emergencies do happen, and if your family and friends know when you were supposed to land, what time you were supposed to check in your hotel a few hours later, and they don't hear from you, then they at least have some of the info that they need to alert the authorities. You should make it common practice to send just like a loose itinerary to your friends and family and check in periodically to update them. Have an emergency plan. Okay, it's a question. Do you know what number to call if you need the police? Hint, it's probably not 911. Before you land, make sure you save emergency phone numbers for your destination, as well as the phone number to your local embassy or consulate. Be sure to keep cash on hand in the local currency and make sure you know what the local warning systems sound like, what the evacuation routes are and where there are shelters or anything like that, especially if you're going to a place that is prone to natural disasters. I also recommend enrolling in STEP, a U.S. government program that will make sure you receive important information from your local embassy. And it tells you all about safety conditions in the country you're traveling to, it helps the embassy contact you in the event of emergency, if something like a natural disaster or a protest breaks out, they'll know how to find you and let you know, and they will also be able to get in touch with your friends and family in an emergency. The government is not going to use it to spy on you or whatever you might be paranoid about, it literally is just a tool to help you in the event of an emergency abroad. And so that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Comment below if you found this video helpful and if you have other questions or tips to share. And be sure to check out some of my other playlists and videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.